hello students i hope you are all doing fine in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss about uh, a very fundamental concept that is frequently used in uh, signal resistance and as well as uh, digital signal processing course so that topic is basically the complex signals and complex frequency so many students at undergrad level uh find it very difficult to understand what a complex signal means or what complex frequency means so in uh, this lecture i am going to give you the basic concept okay, what a complex signal is what is mathematical model how we can represent that complex signal and what are the applications of complex signals how they actually physically exist and similarly i am going to tell you uh, what is complex frequency and uh, how we can actually represent a signal having a complex frequency so before discussing the concept of uh, complex signals and complex frequency let me spend a couple of slides on uh, the concept of real and complex numbers so real numbers are those numbers which are used in everyday life for example the voltage waveform in a half wave rectifier uh, that varies with time or temperature throughout the day on fahrenheit scale or uh, you know distance covered by a vehicle these are all represented by real numbers and they are actually one dimensional quantity now let us consider a complex so number they c can be represented in this figure on a, on a real axis so it is uh, represented on a real here and the real axis by a point both so negative c is and equal to positive 2.5 plus value. j2 so now these real numbers two dimensional number represented two values one is real point, value which is 2.5 for example and it is represented by to minus real axis or horizontal axis temperature and other is scale, the imaginary value by which is single multiplied with on j or i axis. sometimes so this axis is and called real represented by because it represents the vertical axis real numbers, imaginary one axis it is called number. imaginary so real value numbers or so the real quantity are is a one two dimensional, dimensional number it has real value and it has imaginary value right so since it is two dimensional number we have to represent this in two dimensional plane right so that is uh, called also the complex plane it is sometimes called complex plane or the cartesian plane so complex numbers can have a value anywhere in the complex plane right they are not necessarily to be on the real axis or on the vertical axis uh, like c which is actually uh, in a complex plane it is not on the imaginary plane exactly on the real plane but it is on the complex plane so it has some imaginary value as well as some so complex numbers real value. are represented in different ways in literature right so the one representation that we saw in the last slide was the rectangular form or the cartesian form in this uh, form the complex number is represented as its uh, real part and the imaginary part this this form is the fundamental form and very easy to understand the other type of form which is most commonly used in communication systems or we have also used in our lectures in signal and system and digital signal processing is the trigonometric form where uh, the real a uh, number is represented by the cosine function and the imaginary part is represented by sine function and m here is actually the magnitude of the complex number so magnitude of complex number is calculated using this formula square of the real part plus square of the 
imaginary part and the square root and phi is the phase angle which is calculated as the tangent inverse of imaginary part upon the real part. Then the third type of representation is the polar form and uh, this uh, probably the most puzzling form of the uh, representation of the complex number but uh, if you know the Euler's identity these uh, you can represent this complex exponential in the form of trigonometric series like cos phi plus j sin phi and the other form is called the magnitude and angle form in which the complex number is represented in the form of its magnitude and the phase angle now we have uh, understood what real and complex numbers are and how they are represented now let us uh, uh, discuss about the complex signals now uh, let us consider a complex number which is function of time right? for example this one e j 2 pi f naught t is a complex number right? as we discussed in uh, last slides that uh, it ca complex number can be represented in exponential form so now this complex number is not a single quantity but it, it varies with time right? so it is a time varying complex number right? so the phase angle of this complex number can be calculated as tangent inverse imaginary upon real right? so phase angle is basically is equal to 2 pi f naught now as time t gets larger the complex numbers phase angle increases and complex number orbits the origin of the complex plane in a counterclockwise direction right so as the as the time increases the phase angle increases is given in the equation because 2 pi f naught are constant so when t increases the phase angle also increases right so with the increase in t this complex number also increases in counterclockwise direction right so when t is 0 for example the phase angle is 0 when t is uh, 1 the phase angle is 2 pi f naught and when t is 2 phase angle is 4 pi f naught so it, it increases with time in counterclockwise direction so in other words we can say it actually rotates right? when time uh, increases it rotates in counterclockwise direction and the frequency of rotation depends upon f naught for example how many rotations it would complete in one second is is actually uh, it depends upon the value of f naught if f naught is two it means it would complete two rotations per second if f naught is 10 hertz it would complete 10 rotations per second and if f naught is negative if f naught is negative it would rotate in clockwise direction like the number shown here t exponent is negative it means the frequency is negative when frequency is negative it would rotate in clockwise direction now if we plot uh, this number in three dimensions three dimensions means two dimensions as a real and imaginary part and the third dimension is the time because now this signal uh, is a complex signal which varies with time right it doesn't have only real imaginary part but these real and imaginary parts actually vary with time right so it is better to plot this in three dimension to better understand it right so when you plot this complex time varying function in three dimension it follows a cork cork screw path right like a spiral it spiral along the time axis so it start when time is zero and it, it uh, actually uh, circulate or rotates at some specific frequency equal to f naught as the time increases 
and the a real and imaginary parts are shown as a projection on the real axis and the imaginary axis. So, if you only plot uh, imaginary part with respect to time, you will get sine function and if you plot the real part over time, you will get cosine function right? and uh, if you uh, plot the both combined signals versus time, uh, you can see these uh, spirals coming out of uh, the screen when time increases. So, complex signals uh, are also called quadrature signals right? and they are used in many signal processing applications such as digital, digital communication systems, radar systems, antenna beam forming applications and uh, modulation techniques. Different modulation techniques actually use complex or quadrature signal formats. So, complex signal as you know is a combination of cosine and the sine function right? and both are 90 degree phase shifted. The phase shift between cos and the sine function is 90 degree therefore, they are called quadrature signal. Quadrature means 90 degree phase shift. So, these uh, complex signal formats are also called quadrature signals and uh, this is in fact the most commonly used uh, nomenclature in communication systems and if you read, if you uh, will review the literature on communication systems, uh, you will see that this type of description is quite often used as compared to the complex signals. So, a quadrature signal is basically a two dimensional signal whose value at some instant in time can be specified by a single complex number right, having two parts and one is the real part and other is the imaginary part. So, quadrature signals uh, since they are two dimensional signals uh, therefore, what we do we represent them using a complex number it is the most convenient mathematical representation of the complex signal or the quadrature signal. Right? So, quadrature signals are represented by complex number. So, complex number has the real part and imaginary part. It does not mean that the in quadrature signal or in complex signal uh, cosine wave physically exists because it is called real and other part which is sine wave is imaginary it uh, that means it does not exist. No it is not like that both signals physically exist they are both part of the signal quadrature signal or the complex signal but since uh, the their characteristics are best defined by a complex number therefore we represent them using a complex number right so imaginary doesn't mean it doesn't exist imaginary means it is represented by imaginary axis otherwise in quadrature signal processing or the complex signals, both sine and cosine part physically exist. So, complex signals or the quadrature signals are quite oftenly referred as IQ signals in RF modulators and demodulator, demodulator applications. Right? So, it is just another name of complex and quadrature signals. So, the I represents the in phase part which is the cosine function and the real part and Q represents the quadrature part which is 90 degree phase shifted which is imaginary part and it is represented by sinusoidal waveform in the blue color. Right? So, I part is the cosine function represented in the red color here and Q part quadrature part is 90 degree phase shifted which is sinusoidal function represented by blue color in this figure and some of these two waveforms I plus Q is another sinusoidal waveform uh, which is shown in this figure when you add I and Q together you get another sinusoidal waveform and the phase angle of this sinusoidal waveform is actually function of I and Q right? so the phase angle of this waveform would not be 0 or 90 degree but something in between 0 and 90 right that phase angle would depend upon the value of i and q 
So this waveform is actually sum of i and q, and it is a complex waveform. It is a two-dimensional waveform. Therefore, it can be represented by a complex number like this one. Right? I plus q is a complex number, and uh, we can actually further uh, the better way to plot this sinusoidal waveform is this one, where we have a complex plane and uh, we have a real part represented by i, and we have imaginary part which is the q part and this waveform is represented as a vector in this complex plane. The magnitude of the vector is actually the magnitude of this uh, sum of i plus q right? and the phase angle is the phase angle of this q i plus q. So complex signals are basically two dimensional signals they are combination of uh, cosine and the sine wave when cosine and the sine wave are added together they form a new sinusoidal signal of a different phase and that uh, signal is called a complex signal right so the better or the best way to mathematically represent that signal is using a complex number a time varying complex number right so this is what complex signals are I hope uh, you have now better understanding of complex. So complex now let us discuss about also the complex frequency uh, is a complex number or complex quantity in which we have a real part and an imaginary part. So the real part uh, represents the rate of change of magnitude of the signal. Right? It is the fre frequency of the variation of the magnitude. And other part is the phase angle variation, rate of change of phase angle of the signal. Right? So that is basically radial frequency and it is represented by the imaginary part. So the complex frequency is, uh, since it is a two dimensional frequency, it, it, it shows the variation in the magnitude, rate of change of magnitude as well as rate of change of phase angle. Right? So it is two dimensional frequency, so it is best represented by a complex number. Right? So the real part sigma represents the real part and omega is represented by imaginary part. Again, imaginary part doesn't mean omega is imaginary, it doesn't exist. Both frequencies exist, but there it is most convenient to represent the combination of these frequencies with a complex number therefore one has to be real and other has to be imaginary so sigma in complex frequency is real part and it is the rate of change of magnitude right? and the rate of uh, increase in the magnitude or rate of decay in the magnitude whatever and it is usually measured in napper per second so napper is basically a unit of frequency which is a logarithmic unit right like we have another logarithmic unit decibel but in decibel we use log to the base 10 and in napper we use natural log right? this is the difference between napper and decibel right? so in napper per second is basically logarithmic unit and we use natural log of the quantity take natural log of any quantity and uh, you know that would be converted into napper and uh, how many nappers per second there is change in the magnitude or uh, maybe there is change increase in the magnitude or there is decrease in the magnitude so it represents the loss of energy or gain in energy on a logarithmic scale uh, natural logarithmic scale and omega is the imaginary part and it is the rate of change of phase angle right? it is measured in radian per second and with uh, uh, if you divide omega by 2 pi you get the cyclic frequency in hertz uh, cycles per second so let us consider a signal having a complex frequency right so suppose x of t is a signal and it has complex frequency s a equal to e power s t where a is the magnitude and it is e power s t is exponential signal having complex frequency s now let us substitute 
the value of s equal to sigma plus j omega into above equation so substituting s equal to sigma plus j omega in this equation we can get a equal to e power sigma plus j omega into t now further we can actually now separate the real and imaginary parts so separating the real part of exponential and imaginary part of exponential we get x of t equal to a power e sigma t into e power j omega t now further we can uh, uh, represent this complex exponential using Euler's identity is this function cos omega t plus j sin omega t now this a into exponential of sigma t is represents the magnitude of this complex exponential right? so a e power sigma t is basically magnitude m of uh, complex sinusoid represented by this combination and you can see now that uh, the magnitude is also a function of time right? unlike the complex signal we discussed in the first part of this uh, lecture now m is also a function of time you can see sigma into t so the magnitude of the sinusoid can also vary with time so that that is why we said the variation in the magnitude with respect to time is the frequency of the variation in the magnitude and it entirely depends upon the value of sigma a is constant and sigma actually defines the frequency of the variation in the magnitude similarly other frequencies omega which is change rate of change of so now the magnitude of the function uh, the signal complex uh, frequency signal is given by a into e power delta t now there can be three different cases and for simplicity let us assume that a is equal to 1 so case 1 when sigma is greater than 0 so when sigma is greater than 0 the exponential would be an increasing exponential right because sigma is positive and t of course would be positive then m would be increasing with time right? so that is increasing exponential when sigma is greater than 0 similarly when sigma is less than 0 this would make this exponential decaying exponential right so the magnitude of the complex sinusoid would decrease with time here the magnitude of complex sinusoid would increase with time and here the magnitude of sinusoid would decrease with time and third case is when sigma is zero it means frequency of variation in the magnitude is zero so when frequency is zero magnitude would be one right so in that case the magnitude of the complex sinusoid would remain same throughout the time it's it's a rotation its phase angle may change with time but the magnitude would not change in these two cases the phase angle would change with the time as well as the magnitude of the vector would change time right? so here the magnitude of the vector in case 1 would keep increasing with time and here the magnitude of the vector would keep decreasing with time and here the magnitude of the vector would remain same now let us uh, discuss case 1 in detail where sigma is greater than 0 so in this case we have considered sigma equal to 3 and a is equal to 1 in all the cases as we discussed right? so when uh, sigma is equal to 3 it actually is uh, increasing exponential signal and this is the magnitude of the complex sinusoid it means the magnitude of complex sinusoid would increase exponentially with time at a rate defined by value of sigma which is 3 and you can see in this figure that uh, the magnitude of the sinusoid is actually increasing exponentially with respect to time you can see when time is small the magnitude is small 
but as time increases the magnitude of the sinusoid is increasing as well right so here the rate of change of magnitude has frequency 3 nm per second which is actually sigma and the frequency of rotation which is omega is 50 50 radian per second and if we represent this in the complex plane by a vector so this uh, you can see initially the magnitude of the vector when time is 0 is uh, very low or it is equal to 1 when time is increasing the magnitude of the vector is also increasing with time and it is rotating in counterclockwise direction so 50 radian per second frequency is uh, approximately equal to 8 hertz it means the vector would rotate 8 times in a second complete 8 rotations in 1 second right? it would start at t equal to 0 and in 1 second it would complete 8 rotations and each uh, time in each rotation the magnitude of the vector would keep increasing so the in the, and the direction of rotation is in the counterclockwise direction so we can see that uh, magnitude of the vector increases at a frequency 3 nm per second and the rotation of the vector is at a rate of 50 radian per second or 8 hertz 8 rotations per second so you can see the phase angle is also changing continuously with respect to time and the magnitude of the vector is also increasing with respect to time right so therefore it has two variation varying quantities right its phase and the magnitude so both have different frequencies one is called the real frequency which is um, uh, sigma other is called the complex frequency which is called uh, you know omega uh, frequency of the rotation both are real frequencies both physically exist but again uh, since the complex number representation is the best suitable for this type of application therefore we represent them with the real and imaginary values otherwise both are now you can see that uh, in one second from zero to one second it completes one rotation eight rotations one two three four five six seven eight so it has completed eight rotations in one second and the magnitude of the signal increases at a rate of three nanometer per second now if we increase the imaginary frequency the omega if we double the omega you can see in this figure increasing omega and now omega here it was 8 rotation per second now it is 16 rotation per second right so 8 hertz and 16 hertz here it was 50 radian per second now it is 100 radian per second right and uh, sigma is same here it was 3 nanometer per second again here it is also 3 nanometer per second so we have kept the sigma e equal to 3 in both cases and we have doubled the omega here it was 50 now it is 100 so you can see as far as the rate of change of magnitude is concerned in both cases it is same the maximum value is around 10 maximum value is around 10 but number of rotations have doubled now it has uh, 8 rotations per second now we have 16 rotations per second right so increasing omega only increases number of rotations the rate of change of magnitude doesn't change right similarly if we increase the nap frequency while keeping the radial frequency same you get number of rotations same 8 rotation per second but the magnitude now is rate of change of magnitude is different right here the final value of the magnitude was around 10 now the final value of magnitude is around 20 right so here the frequency of the magnitude was 3 nm per second now we have frequency 4 nm per second right so you can see clearly that uh, increasing omega or decreasing omega would have effect on the number of rotations and increasing and decreasing sigma would have effect on the rate grow growth or decay of uh, magnitude of the signal the complex signal 
now case 2 when sigma is less than 0 so let's say sigma is equal to minus 3 and e power minus 3 t is basically a decreasing exponential a decaying exponential right so in that case you see that rotation uh, again and the complex on the side has frequency 50 or 8 hertz so you get 8 rotations per second but now instead of increasing circles you will have decreasing circles right so signal uh, would decrease in time at a rate of 3 nepa per second right so sigma is equal to minus 3 and here as t increases the vector rotates in counterclockwise direction at frequency 50 radian per second or 8 hertz but this time since the uh, sigma is negative therefore the magnitude of the vector would decrease at a rate of 3 nepa per second similarly when sigma is 0 right so e power 0 is simply 1 so it means the magnitude of the complex sinusoid side would remain same throughout the time right so now uh, you will get eight rotations per second but each circle would have the same magnitude as the next one in that case when t increases the vector again rotates at frequency 8 hertz in counterclockwise direction but in that in this case the magnitude of the vector remains same so that is end of this uh, lecture i hope uh, you have now better understanding of uh, complex frequency and complex signals and their applications and if you have any queries you can contact me using my email address given in the first slide of this lecture thank you very much